Hi friends. In our previous class, we have discussed about cranium of the head, which is the only the sclerotized part except the any other appendages in the insect head, which consists of the sclerites and sutures. So in the previous class, we have discussed about the various sclerites and their joining sutures. Insect head consists of three most important appendages that is eyes which is compound eyes and the simple eye and the mouth part and the antenna. So these are the three major appendages of the insect head. In this class we are going to discuss briefly about the mouth parts of the insect head. Primitive insect that means the ancestral insect or the old age insect they had five common mouth parts that is labrum, mandible, maxillae, hypoparynx and the labium. So these are all the five most common mouth parts present in all the insect. But based on their evolution, the insect have modified their these common mouth parts or the general mouth parts based on their food habits and the, the places where they live. So first let's discuss about the individual mouth parts separately and we will be talking about their modification in other insects based on their feeding habit. First one is our labrum. It is uh, like the upper lip of the insect mouth part. It is located just below the clypeus which is the sclerite. This labrum is situated in the upside so they will be moving upside and downside uh, closing and opening the mouth part. So ultimately they will be protecting the other mouth parts like mandibles, maxillae inside when they are not working and, and also it is useful in guiding the food inside the mouth cavity. So this is the function of the labrum and the next mouth part is our mandible which is the which is otherwise known as the primary jaws, the primary cutting teeth of the insect is mandibles. Usually pair of mandibles will be present in the right side and the left side and mostly they are unsegmented part and they are highly sclerotized part to cutting the toughest, toughest part of the food. And if you see the mandibles they are attached in the sidewise as we can see the labrum it is attached in the upper side so they will be moving upside and downside and in case of the mandibles they are attached in the sidewise of the mouth part so they will be more they will be moving in the sidewise in the in the attachment there are two attachments are there in the base of the mandibles and in the mandibles itself there are two kinds of teeth will be there in the terminal region of the mandible it will be having the incisor kind of teeth which will be the cutting teeth and in the basal region of the mandible there will be the grinding teeth will be there or otherwise known as the molar teeth and also here we can see the variations in the mandibles of the insect with the various feeding habit like in case of herbivores we can see the mandible modification where it is having more amount of the incisor surfaces and in case of the carnivorous it is having the uh, terminal area as it is with the incisor one for cutting the uh, their prey and the grinding area is also highly developed. The insect that is feeding on or sucking the plant sap it doesn't need the mandibles to be that much stronger. So the those kind of mandibles are not that much well sclerotized. Next insect mouth part is maxilla which is situated just below the mandibles. It is otherwise called as the accessory jaw as it helps in the mandibles function as it is the maxilla holds the food in position or pulling the food in the position to facilitate the mandibles action of cutting them. So it is called as the accessory jaw or the secondary jaw as the primary jaw is the mandibles. Maxilla also pad segment which means it is having both right side and left side but when we see the mandibles it is the dicontelic or it is joined in two sides in case of mandibles as it has the major function of cutting down the food. All the other mouth parts except the mandibles they are all monocontelic or they are having only one joining as comparing with the mandibles they will be having two joinings and the mandible is unsegmented sclerotized part it is not at all segmented but in case of the maxillae which lies just below the mandible it is two segmented part in the basal area it is called as a cardo and the above part is known as the stipes the distal region of the stipes it is bearing two different lobes which is called as the lacina and the galia the outer part is 
smooth galia and the inner part is the little bit sclerotized lacina or it is jaw like in structure and the pulp that is bearing from the stripes in the lateral area of the stripes is with the pulp which is mostly a sensory organ it acts as the tasting sensilla or it usually predicts the taste of the food the sensory pulpus region in the maxilla is called as the pulpifer which is five segmented and also if you see the same pulp like structure in the next part next mouth part that is the labium sensory pulp in the labium is three segmented which is called as a pulpiger so as a secondary jaw the maxillae helps in the function of the mandible so that it is called as the accessory jaw or the secondary jaw the lacina of the maxillae helps in holding the food in the position while the mandibles acting on them our next mouth part is the hypopharynx the small tongue like structure found between the maxillae and just above the labium is called as the hypopharynx and the salivary gland which produces the saliva which facilitate the initial digestion of the food in the mouth part is also secreted nearby the hypopharynx are mostly in, in just below the hypopharynx the area between the labrum and the hypopharynx is called as a sibarium and the area between the labium and the hypopharynx is known as salivarium where the salivary glands opens just below the hypopharynx so this is about the hypopharynx so our next mouth part or the final mouth part in the base of the mouth cavity is called as the labium or otherwise known as the secondary maxillae because in the primitive insects like the ancestry insect they had the secondary maxilla so primitive insect they had two maxillary segments first maxilla and second maxilla this second maxilla is actually formed transformed into the uh, modern day insects labium so it is otherwise known as the second maxilla labium is divided into two portion by means of the labial suture in between that is the postmentum the basal region of the labium is known as the postmentum and the distal region is known as the prementum the postmentum itself is divided into two portion which is called as the submentum and the mentum here the prementum it is divided into two lobes in the distal area which is called as the paraglossa and the glossa the interior lobe is known as the glossa and the out outside is known as the outside lobe is known as the paraglossa sometimes these glossa and paraglossa they combine together and they fuse together forming the structure known as ligula here we can see in the prementum itself the pulpi is formed like in case of the maxilla also an another pulpi was formed like that here also another pulpi forms but the pulpi which is the sensory organ it is three segmented as in case of the maxilla we do have seen that it is five segmented but in case of the labium it is three segmented and it is called as a pulpiger in the maxilla it is called as pulpifer but in case of labium it is called as a pulpiger we can remember it with the alphabetical the maxilla comes before the labium right so so f comes before the g so pulpifer comes first and the pulpiger comes next which is our labium this is about the basic structure of the mouth parts present in the insect now let's examine the modification in the insect mouth parts based on their feeding habit so if we see the insect it is having two kinds of feeding habit based on which the insect mouth part differs first one is the mandible type based on the feeding habit the mandible type is feeding mainly on the solid food and in case of the hostile type it actually feeds mainly on the liquid food so based on their feeding habit it differs the mandible type is otherwise called as most primitive type of insect mouth part as the ancestor insect had this kind of mouth parts the hostile type is known as most modern one because from the primitive mouth part the insect evolved themselves to form the modern mouth parts now let's examine individual, individual types of feeding habit based on which the insect mouth part differ starting from the biting and chewing kind of mouth part 
So this biting and chewing kind of mouth part consists of all the mouth part that we have discussed just now. So the parts like it will be having all the parts like the labrum which is the flap like organ which is movable and it is helping the mandible to act on the food by keeping the food in position. And the next organ is the labrum epipharynx. As we have told that it is the organ of taste, here we can see that inside the labrum there is a small lobe-like structure present inside the labrum. Here it is known as the labrum epipharynx. In it is the organ of taste. Here it is also having the taste bud, just like uh, we are having the taste bud in our tongue. And the third structure is the mandible. As we have already discussed, it is having the uh, two types of teeth, the incisor or the cutting teeth in the distal area which is sharply pointed and the molar or the grinding teeth, the proximal teeth which is actually acting as the grinding teeth and they actually act transversely to bite and grind the food into small fragments as they will act the tran in the manner of transversely on the food. The next one is the maxilla as we have told the paired secondary jaw or the accessory jaw as the maxilla is divided into two parts the cardo which is the basal part and the stripes which is the lateral part from the stripes the lateral antenna like segment the five segmented pulpy is formed which is actually a sensing organ and the, in the lateral area there is another lobes the lachina and gallia is formed the outer lobe is the Galia and the inner lobe is the lachina which is actually toothed structure and the next structure is the hypopharynx as we already discussed which is also tongue like organ located centrally in the preoral cavity and the salivary gland actually the salivary gland duct opens through this hypopharynx and the next one is the labium or the lower lip which is actually a composite structure and bounds the mouth cavity from the below and it forms the base of the preoral cavity and actually the distally it is divided into prementum which actually bears the two pair of lobes called as the glossa and paraglossa outer region is called as a paraglossa and the inner region is called as a glossa when both of them are fused they are called as the ligula so this is how the biting and chewing mouth part works. The labrum will pull the food inside and the mandibles will act on it crushing them and the maxillae below the mandible will be helping the insect to hold the food in the position. With the use of the maxillary pulp and the labial pulp they will sense the, sense the food whether it is uh, edible or not and both the labium and the maxillae they will be helping after the food is uh, cut it down by the mandibles they will be pulling the food inside inside the into the esophagus which is the first part of the alimentary canal or the digestive tract so this is about the biting and chewing part so the biting and chewing kind of mouth parts are coming under the mandibulate kind of mouth parts examples of such mouth parts are the dragonflies and the immature stages of the caterpillars yes and the termites and these are all the few of the examples where the insect possess the biting and chewing or the mandible kind of mouth parts. The next division is the hostel laid type of mouth parts where the insect use the straw like appendages to suck the sap to feed on them. Now let us move on to the question part. Question number one. Salivarium opens behind. Maxillae mandible, labium or hypopharynx. Question number two is the area between labrum and hypopharynx is called as. Question number three is two examples of insect having biting and chewing mouth parts. Question number four is which part is believed to be the modification of second maxillae. Question number five. Find which among them is true or false. Question number 1. Mandible is two segmented part. Mandible is unsegmented. Cutting teeth of mandible is molar and grinding teeth is called incisor. Pulpigeri is five segmented and the pulpifery is six segmented. Question number 6 is glossa and paraglossa are the parts of. 
come on your answers below and see you in the next class guys until then bye bye